Hey guys, okay, so I'm in the shop today and I'm going to show you guys how to cut out the frame for the Jeep. So what I'm using is just a, a quarter inch aluminum, it's four inches, it's just plate aluminum. You can get it at any, you know, metal place. Uh, I get mine at Superior Metals in Ottawa. Uh, but this is what I'll be using, but for right now to show you guys, I'll be using just a regular masonite. So it's a little easier to, uh, to cut and to show. But here's the, here it is. Here's the Jeep. And here's the aluminum frame. I've already started with the inner fender wells. I'll show you guys how to make that also. That's the other fender well. There you go. And then the top. And the bottom. So. What we're going to start off with is cutting out this frame. Uh, this is the, our existing frame that we kind of butchered up and this is our mock-up. So I have all the holes that I need to, uh, to drill it all out uh, and I don't have to worry about where they go because they've already been already done. Uh, so now I'll show you guys how to cut this piece out of this piece. Uh, we'll do it in two pieces so that it's accurate and you'll be able to know uh, they'll be exactly the same. So I'll show you guys on the table. Hey guys, so what I have is my piece of masonite and my frame. I'll put it on my piece I'm going to be cutting out. Make sure that it's all nice and square. And what you do is you're going to trace it all around. Like this. And also any notch that you want to put in, remember to to, to, uh, uh, to notch it out. Alrighty, so here, uh, I have a little sticking out, but uh, I'm gonna eliminate this part right here, uh, so it's just, it's just gonna be just flat, because I found out when I put my seat on, uh, it was gonna hit the top of my roof. So I figured I'll just drop it down about a half an inch, and my seat will sit down and it'll be, it'll be sitting down a lot lower. It'll be a look, look a little more realistic. So here, here's the frame. Take your finger gauge like I showed you guys. Go like this and just make sure that it's, everything's parallel to each other. Just like this. Okay, and then just square up anything, any of the marks. And also you'll be doing a little notch here at the top. I'll show you why later on. Alrighty, so I'll show you guys and then I did two of them. So you got a, you got a left and a right. Uh, this one is, uh, this one notched out so that uh, the servo wire can, can protrude. Alrighty. Alrighty, so we're going to start cutting. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start cutting out all of our uh, vertical or horizontal, no, vertical lines first. So we're going to cut this, this, and this, and these parts. So what I'm going to do is come close. I'll bring my saw down to right where that part is. And I want to put these two pieces together as one, okay? And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll draw a line up. I'll set my table saw. And I'll move it over a bit so I can pull it in. Like that. And then I'll cut it to length also. Again, all we do together. So now you have a perfect, now they're all, everything's perfect. So here, I'm gonna angle my table saw to match this angle right okay, here. So we're gonna finish up our lines here. So I'm gonna raise my table blade so that it, it matches this part right here. Okay? And my angle, unfortunately you guys have to kind of eye it. And again, put them together. There you go. And then we're going to do this bottom one, this bottom line right here. 
So again, the same thing, but this one is on a 45 degree angle. So you set it at your 45, you lower the blade down, and then you kind of eye it. This is a lot of eyeing, so maybe make a couple of them make sure that you don't do it. Raise up a bit. Keep on raising until you meet this line. Like that. It's a lot of eye and trying and stuff like that. And unfortunately, there's no there's no really set rule. It's uh, just go by. Okay, so I'll cut this line right here. Just like that. Stop the table saw. Straighten it up. And I'm going to notch out where our transfer case is for our, uh, our RC four wheel drive uh, transfer case. So I'm going to notch out a, a, a hole so this can be set right inside and it's all going to be flush at the bottom. transfer case I took it out of the truck and we're going to put this inside the notch right now it doesn't fit but we're going to nibble away at it until it's snug so we're just going to take off just a little bit at a time until it fits there we go so you, we're just going to notch it, there you go, and then there you go. Alrighty, so now we're going to cut our horizontal lines. So raise the blade up as high as you can. And what you're going to do is you're going to start with the, doesn't matter which one you want to start with, I always start with the top. But I'll show you what we're going to do after. We're going to just bring it to the table saw. Or to, sorry, to okay, the, so we're uh, at the table, a uh, bandsaw, I should say. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the rest of it. Right here, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna cut the angle for our tra for our transmission. Okay. And now we're gonna notch out where our uh, rod ends, our links are gonna go. Now 
we're gonna knock out the top. And here I'm using a, a metal cutting saw blade on my bandsaw. Now again, if you guys don't have a table saw, uh, with a bit of practice, you could probably cut everything on your, your bandsaw. But if you have a table saw, it works out a lot better. Alrighty, so now I'll bring it over to the drill press and then we'll start okay, drawing so, our lines. Uh, we're going to measure for our holes. So we're going to transfer our holes from our mock-up into, into, onto our, uh, our main frame. So what you do is you just measure out wherever this hole is, or if you have uh, a long pencil with a, uh, a sharp lead, you can kind of just go inside, but I don't recommend that. Uh, so I just, it's two inches, so I just transfer it over, go from the bottom, it's uh, 13 16 so there's one hole, and then you go to the other hole, again, I always start from the, the front, so everything is the same. So it's five and three quarters. So I just transfer it down. It doesn't have to be exact. And then five eighths. And then I like my link, uh, the inner link uh, rods, uh, I like them to be parallel. So whatever this one is, you just transfer it over with your, with your finger gauge again. And then from here, you're looking at about nine and five eighths. And you transfer that over. And then your shocks. Wherever you decide to put your shocks, I have it at uh, 14 and an eighth. So I just transfer that over. And I go about a quarter of an inch below the, the top, and I just draw my line. And that's where my, uh, all, main, my main holes are gonna be. And then also, we're also gonna cut out the frame, also your, your parts, this part. These, uh, these uh, center frames, I guess. Uh, what you do is, you line up your saw for the top frame. Cut. And then for the bottom, or for the back, you line it up so it's the right length. You cut two of these. You got your front, you got your front, and your two backs. And what you do is, uh, in between, I have it at uh, two inches, inch and seven eighths, and that will fit my my uh, my transmission perfectly. You see how that lines up, and then your transfer case underneath. Like so, like that. Alrighty. So you put your table saw at one and seven eighths. front, that one goes in the back, and this one goes in the middle uh, to, house your, uh, to house your battery inside. Alright, so keep these pieces, throw the other ones out, and then again, for your holes, take your finger gauge, I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch, or not even, maybe an eighth of an inch of, of room, so I'll just transfer a line over. And the same thing with the back, transfer a line over. And then my battery is five and a half inches, so I'll just go five and a half inches. And I'll draw another line down here so my battery fits in between. And then here, I'll draw your cross marks for where you're gonna drill it out. And there you go. So these are all the holes that you need. Um, and then you double this up. You take some tape, 
and you tape it together. So now we're going to go to the drill press and we'll drill out our hole. Okay, so we're at the drill press and this is, a, this is the drill bit I use. Uh, this is the 764 of DeWalt. Uh, it's the split point cobalt and I find this one, uh, it's probably the best one on the market. Anyway, I find anyway for drilling out for aluminum. So what we're going to do here is we're going to drill out with the 964. So we'll drill out all of our, all of our holes. There you go, there's all of our holes. And now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer to a 1 8 drill bit. And we're gonna drill out the parts, the holes that are gonna be for the frame attachments. So we're not gonna drill out our shock post, uh, this is our two shock posts and also our our uh, our set screws here for our links for the four-way uh, setup. So these ones we're not going to drill one eighth because we need uh, nine uh, seven sixteenths for putting our screw inside so we can tap it. So we're just going to drill out the back. There we go. So now we drill out the back. Alrighty. Alrighty, so now we're gonna do a countersink. Alright, this is my countersink. We're gonna put it up in the drill press. And I always like countersinking all of my chassis screws. So we're only gonna countersink the ones for our for our frames. And remember, there's a left and a right. So Raise it up here. Okay, that's one side, and then you gotta do a, a left side or a right side. There we go. Now we have our holes drilled out. Now off to the next step. Alrighty guys, so the next step is we're going to notch out this uh, body divider here uh, so that I can put my, my battery through it and then I can have access to it, okay? So we're gonna cut that part out. So I've, I've already drawn a kind of a line and you set up your table saw. Watch your finger. Back and forth. There you go. You can you can put this at any type of width you want. So now your body dividers are we have them, and I usually use uh, this aluminum glue. Uh, it's for fiberglass, aluminum, glass, PVC, all that type of stuff. Um, so that when I glue it together, so what I'll do is I'll put some glue, and I have my frames here, and what I'll do is. This is kind of requires a few hands, but you line this all up, you put some glue on it. I usually use just these little clamps. I'm just doing this real quick like just to show you, get, get, give you an, the idea. Okay, and then we do the, the front. And of course, you'll have some glue. I would do a dry run first to get yourself all set up. Alrighty. And then the divider which holds the battery. 
So there you go. The reason why you glue it, and oh, and on top of that, then after you glue it, you look at it and you line everything up. If all this stuff is flush, all your body uh, dividers are all flush, your frame should be pretty square, okay? And what you do is, you put a bit of glue and you clamp it all up. You let it set for a couple hours. Once it's all set, then you can remove your clamps. Go back to your drill press. And with the 9, uh, 764, you, you drill inside that hole. And that will give you a perfect alignment. The reason why I glue it, because it's really hard to drill all these holes and have everything move. And it's, it's really awkward. So that's... That's the reason behind the glue. It'll, it's, it's, not the, it's not really, really super strong, but it'll be strong enough just so you're able to drill your holes. And then after that, you just tap your screws right in there. Your flathead, whatever size screws you, you, you want to use. Alrighty? Okay. Okay, so I'm just using our, our old mock-up just to show you guys. Um, so these are the holes that we pre-drilled. It's glued up. Uh, like I said, this is just just this is just the old mock-up, and we're going to drill our holes for our uh, our, our uh, link rods. So here you just line up so it's kind of level with your with your tables or your uh, your uh, your drill press, and you mark your lines, and then you just drill with your not with your seven sixty fourth. You just drill for your holes. You mark them, and that's where your link. I'll just show you. Hold on. This is where your 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 link is going to be, and then also here. This is where your set screw is, so that when you put your top uh, four link mount, you put it right here. You see. And then you just put a nut on that, and it holds everything nice and strong. Okay, and then now we're going to, we, we sh you should, like, we'll figure out where we're going to put our servo. So our servo is going to be, if you take a look underneath here, our servo is, is mounted a little bit further back, and that's where I have put the notch. I'll show you guys in a second. Alright, so this is where I put, I took off uh, the inner fender well, I just removed it. And this is where the servo is going to be. So on the inside here, uh, this servo is a Savox and it fits almost perfectly. And I just put in a, a scrap piece of right here. I just put in a scrap piece of aluminum and I just screwed it from the sides. If you take a look. Alrighty. Don't glue this piece in because uh, you'll need it to remove it to get your servo out. Okay. Uh, just put a scrap piece and underneath what I did is I just pre drill a hole as you can see on my mock-up where the uh, servo is going to be and that's that's where you fasten your servos alrighty and on also on the actual aluminum frame I just put in a piece of quarter of let me get a piece for you alright so also we have our frame cut out and this is what I was talking to you guys about. It's a little uh, power file. And after when you cut aluminum, it gets kind of rough. I just use this. And I just sand the edges down. So it's all nice and smooth. And also, I use it for, I'll show you guys. For all my styrene. I, I do all my curves with it. It's a, it's a great tool. So again, it's a Black & Decker power file. You can get it pretty much at any hardware store. And you get the, the belts also. It's a variety pack. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a must-have. The, 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 the spare belt you buy. And it comes in various uh, assortment of, of grits. So for use it for something like that, I'd go, you know, the finer grit. You don't need anything really rough. Uh, even for going around your body, uh, depending how much you have to remove, you know, fine, medium will, 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 be, will be best. But, you know, they do break, so maybe get a couple packages of these. Because, like I said, they do break and uh, they wear out. And, uh, unfortunately, uh, you can only get X amount of time on these things. Okay, so, at the bottom, I just use uh, whatever piece of aluminum I find from, uh, from that metal place. 
It doesn't have to be, it could be any thicknesses. And what I do is I make my bottom to hold my battery right here so it doesn't fall through. And also on the front, also, I put one in here. The front, you don't really need to. I, I just like to have it. I, it's, it helps keep the frame nice and straight. And if you want to put something here, it, it won't fall out if you want to put a spare battery or your servo or your receiver or anything else. And I just kind of tuck that up inside. And here, this is where I notched it out. So this is where I'm going to be putting my dash. I'll show you guys. So here it is. That's my, this is my, my bracket that I'm going to use to support my dash with. And when I pull it off, my dash stays with the truck and, and also, so once I'm done with my dash, I'll just hook it on here. I make it a little bigger uh, and I'll just cut it out later and then I just screw it in. And that is how you do that part of the frame. And also the inner fender wells, what I do is here I use, I'll use uh, 100 thickness of styrene and I'll take a piece of cardboard and I'll put it on the inside of my fender well and then I'll just trace it out like so and then I'll just take my pencil and I'll just go follow the same curve you just go about maybe quarter inch bigger and that's where you cut that, this part okay you cut that out and that's your inner fender well and then what you do here you cut that out uh, you put your truck upside down And then you center it. So you got about two, two and an eighth, two inches, something like that. And that's how you center it. And then you kind of, this is kind of an eyeing type of thing. And you take it down and you kind of eye it where it kind of needs to go. That's why you do a mock-up so that you can, uh, you can drill a whole bunch of holes and you don't have to worry about it. Where your shock is. Alrighty, so I'll show you my next step. So what I do here is that's 80, 80 thickness and I'll cut this piece um, two and two and a half and I'll, and I'll glue it, I'll fold it over. Remember how I showed you guys to roll it into your hands? And you get a nice curve, glue it on the inside. And then here, of course, I have a spacer so that the shock doesn't go too far in. And screw it all together. And then this has a taper. So you go from two and an eighth to two and I think two and three eighths, draw a line and sand it. So they both have a taper on them. If you take a look. Okay. And then I grab my template. Again, with the same thickness of aluminum, I make my bottom. For where my seats are going to be, I make a I make a, a a template out of cardboard. I line it all up, and then I measure the inside here. So this is about seven inches, and I made my floor uh, six and three quarters. So I left an eighth of an inch, and then of course, right where when you put the body back on, you take a pencil and you draw where your back wall is to know where to stop your your floor and then I, I'm using the RC four wheel drive uh, racing seats and I have I made I have two of them 
and I'm just going to line it all up and then along with your your dash or your mock-up it's like that and there we go that's step number four uh, again if you guys need uh, the, the measurements for the frame I'll if, if anybody wants I'll draw it all out but again it's going to vary on the size of your truck and also what you're putting for chassis uh, again, I'm using the RC four wheel drive uh, disruptor, the the transmission, and also the transfer case. Uh, I, I like to set up; it's been working really well for me. And again, steel drive shafts and your output drive shaft from your transmission, also the steel drive shaft. Uh, again, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, I hope this helped out. Take care. Thanks.